Okay, so uh, today is uh, day three in this 30-day uh, project for YouTube uh, that we're going to be doing a, a full project that will be having a servo system controlled by state logic and it will be controlled through an HMI system, which we'll be doing through Factory Talk uh, 7.0 SE. So uh, this is day three, so we'll be going back adding our UDT today, our, our uh, user-defined data type, and well, we're not going to import it even though we already have it pre-made so I'd like to go go back through and, and actually make it again so uh, this would be our, our motion so uh, basic uh, motion and then we'll call it UDT right so basic motion instructions and this would be you know for quick use so um, alright so then we'll go ahead and start off this uh, we'll do our MSO and then we'll put our data type again this is going to be a motion uh, if I can spell, sorry about that. So it's not a motion group, it's a motion instruction, right? Now, before we talked about on day one, we talked about we're going to have uh, five axes, right? So there's, for this data type, we'll put in five instances where we'll cut it on or cut it off. But I'll tell you what, let's do seven just in case. So give ourselves some growing room. So we'll do seven instances of the on servo, motion servo on and probably do that on every one of these so uh, in that instance we're going to have a motion axis off and then we'll come in and do the same thing um, and I'll make this as quick as possible so you can kind of see what I'm doing and I won't have to come back and you know um, basically we won't have to come back and explain it. We'll just you see it as it's being made. And again, we'll just keep this as quick as possible. So I'm just getting the, the high level ones that we're going to be using. Um, these are all the motion instructions. As you, if you're not familiar with what we you know as far as the motion instructions, uh, we will be you know going through them using them I will be explaining them as I use them so no, no real rush on that uh, don't worry we will touch base on that if you, you have it following along on, on some of my prior videos so um, again that's that's not a big deal so uh, this is a motion actually shut down right here this is motion actually shut down reset this will be a fault reset um, so I'm just basically going and throwing the basics in, I'm not throwing any kind of advanced stuff or, or anything of that nature. So motion X stop. I'm just kind of forgive me. I'm going off these off memory. So and then we'll do a motion X home. Okay, so the next one we'll do a motion axis jog. Again, we're going to use seven instances. So motion. Uh, make sure you put your your dim zero at seven. So basically, your dimensions. I put user group in a. Let's change this to uh, instruction. And then we want you to put your dimensions. You know, seven. You want seven deep. So we'll put seven instances of each each one of these instructions. So motion axis move, motion group, and then what instruction again seven instances of this instruction, right? And then we want the motion axis gear. We're probably not going to use seven of these, but we will go ahead and keep it uniform. This is part of modulus programming, right? It's keeping it where we have some variability, some stuff we can add. Motion dynamic change. This is the next one. 
again, motion instruction, and then dimension seven. This will be our motion um, redefined position. So it, okay, instead of a home, we redefine position, right? Uh, again, we'll go back through these as we use them. Um, if you're not familiar with it, you can look at some of my prior videos, uh, go through and see. So right now we've made our, our UDT. We put in a basic description in there. We, we have our motion axis on, seven instances of that. Uh, motion axis off, again, seven instances of that. A motion axis shut down, motion axis shut down reset, a motion axis fault reset, a motion axis stop, a motion axis home, a motion axis jog, motion axis um, are basically move, so move to position, whatever you define that as, a motion axis gear, a motion dynamic or change dynamics, uh, so if you want to change speeds of that nature, um, or even change acceleration rates and stuff, um, a motion redefined position. These are our basic functions. We're going to hit apply now, and then we're going to hit OK. So now we have our basic UDT that we're going to be using for our system. <clears throat> okay, so now that we have done that and we still have time in this video, what we want to do is we want to add our, we want to go back and add our, uh, our servos. Basically, our, we're going to add in um, all of our virtual axes. Well, all of these will be virtual axes, even though we're going to be calling them different things. Um, there will be one virtual axis master, right? And then the rest of these will just be the virtual servos because we don't actually have hardware. But we still want to be treating this stuff just as as you would a normal process. So it'll be simulated just as, as normal as it can be. Uh, so as far as motion groups, um, you know, we basically just want to come in and say motion group and then again this is in our scope it's going to be our processor and then we're going to have it's going to be a motion group as as it indicates uh, in that instance you know you want to go ahead and add new axis you want to go ahead and add virtual axis because again we're not using any hardware right and then we're going to call this so virtual axis, and this would be our virtual master, right? Or actually, we can just itemize that so that everybody's aware in case they, they see this a little late. They don't see this on day one. <clears throat> then we'll come down and add another virtual, and then we'll call this you know, axis one. Or if this would be, I guess, how do we want to see how we want to build this? Um, we can do axis one, or we can just say, um, you know, whatever it may be. We could put it as a conveyor or whatever. Um, for the sake of this, we'll just keep it as axis one. And we may come back and change the the naming cultures. So again, this is. We'll throw in our axis for the sake of time. And even though they're virtual axis, we're naming them different, right? So that way we can keep the hierarchy of, of what's what. Um, so axis three and then axis four will be our last one. So axis four. Okay, so we've added our UDT, we've added our virtual master, which we're going to be putting in and controlling in our virtual master up here. So this would be doing all of our speeds. So we'll basically be starting this, and every one of these would be slave driven off of this, based upon a like a draw or a set uh, dimension, or maybe something like a slave uh, element or something. As we gear them, you know, we'll, we'll go back and, and look through that. So what we can do is come back in Motion Planner. Um, we can put our conversions. 
Uh, we're going to make our virtual master. We'll put that as linear right now. Uh, we may come back and change that. Our homing is absolute at zero. Dynamics, we need to come back and put <coughs> speeds and stuff of that nature. Uh, for the sake of this, we'll call this 3000. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll just put acceleration. And we'll, we may come back and change these. Um, we'll calculate this based upon just like 50%. So. And then we'll basically have our system. So, okay, that's why that makes sense. So this was actually 49. Okay, so, uh, you know, uh, let's. Yeah, it's fine. That's fine right now. Um, and we'll come back and put the rest of these. We'll set the rest of these as just about the same. Again, we may come back and change these, so no big deal. I just want to throw some default values in here on this video to show the basic setup of what you need to do. Um, if you do not throw any video, uh, like any values into this and you try to run it, uh, basically it will give you, um, it won't run, it'll give you a, a fault. Um, and it's basically because of the fact that, you know, you don't have any data in it. So it doesn't know what to do. So all we're doing is, is giving the servo basically a brain, you know, indicating where it should be, uh, you know, some dynamics about it. Okay, so that's four. <clears throat> Three thousand, five thousand. Trying to get this as quick as possible so that you're not sitting here waiting on me. But at the same time, I kind of want you to see this stuff too. So, you know, for those of you who have done this before, it's you know, it's kind of the same process, right? So, for those of you who haven't. Uh, you know, this may be helpful to you. And you'll see, as we get further along into this, you'll see exactly that we may come back and change these, um, you know, based upon how the, how we want it to run. But right now, just to get it set up, we want to come in and, and put these default values in here. So it will run. Right. So this is the last one at 3,000, 5,000, no, not that much. Okay. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so what we've done so far. In this video, I came back in, in uh, this is day three, and this is more of our ACD file. We've added our UDT. We've added all of our instructions that we're going to be using. And these are the basic uh, instructions that we're going to be using, right? <clears throat> now, we've made seven instances of each of these instructions. So, seven different ones that we can use, even though we only have five. Uh, really four because we're going to be using uh, the virtual axis for set things so we came down in and we added a motion group right the thing is about the motion group <clears throat> the next thing we need to do is set the attribute so the course rate update let's just go ahead and do this correctly every uh, let's keep in mind that every virtual axis that you use you should be using you could, should be counting it as one um, if we had a card down here, then you would count the card as uh, basically one as well. Every natural servo that you would use, you would you you would count it as uh, like a normal servo. You would count it as half. Um, so in our instance, we want to go ahead and throw it uh, at five. I'll throw it at six. Um, <clears throat> this is because I want to give myself 
to make sure that it, it you know updates fine uh, really if this was a time scheme that was real time dependent and stuff like that uh, then I would keep this a little tighter but uh, this is just your your information the time you're getting your information back from your process or your all your servos so you're trying to as you're scanning your course rate update is the in the process that we're running right now like like 5000 version 20 the hierarchy of that processor would be motion first and then io uh, motion first and then logic really uh, so you want to make sure that your your course rate update is as low as possible so but within the means of, of the proper addition rate right but as low as possible so you get your tag update rate correctly tag update um, auto update should be enabled and then of course general fault you can do whatever you you would like with that uh, again the assignments uh, everything's assigned you can unassign them if you want to and you can see that it goes in if I click apply it goes into a ungrouped uh, <clears throat> we actually want all of ours grouped in but I just wanted to go over the uh, you know course rate update real quick with you so make sure you set that as well in your motion group so uh, we did our UDT we did our motion group we added it we did each axis uh, we add those we added our virtual master axis we put our default um, dynamics in there and again we may come back and change those but right now we put it as default and then we came down and changed our course rate update and this course rate update coincides with you know what's happening with the uh, time synchronization so again we're at uh, above the 16 minute mark I told you I'd like to keep it to, to around that um, this is day three uh, we may start, you know, starting to make some good progress on this. So I would just like to end this video where it's at. And um, again, I'll, I'll put the uh, prior videos in the show notes below in case where you start, if you want to backtrack or or go back over things, um, that'd be you know pretty helpful to you. So um, the goal of this is to get it very detailed and, and to show the start from scratch, uh, making a full full project and and getting everything running. So again, thank you for your time and. Uh, you know, hopefully this is this is helpful and value added to you. Uh, and uh, again, I'll see you uh, do another video tomorrow. And uh, again, thank you for your support.